Hey guys, how are you all doing? Welcome to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if Naruto turns into a 2 year old, and stuck in a whole new world, Naruto x Karai, movie, so before we start, go check out the author of this fanfic, Rakage52, link is in the description, also subscribe if you enjoy the video, let's start the story. During the climax of the most brutal war in shinobi history, the fourth great shinobi war, the Juubi has been unleashed, and the Tsuki no Mi has been cast. The whole world is known as Infinite Tsukiyomi, the one who cast Madara Chiha. Madara wants to bring peace, but his brand of peace puts the whole world into a deep sleep. He absorbs the Juubi inside of him, making him the ten-tailed. He thought of himself as the savior of the shinobi world, but his victory was short-lived. He was betrayed by a black figure known as by Black Zetsu by impaling his hand to Murata's left chest. Telling him that he's not the savior, Madara protested telling him he's the one who created him. Black Zetsu replied, the one who created it was a woman named Kagaya. Kagaya Tsutsuki, the mother of the Sage of the Sixth Path. She was a princess who hails from an unknown distant land and had lived long before the founding of the hidden villages, during an era of endless wars between mankind. Longing for peace, Kagaya decided that it was necessary for her to attain godlike powers in order to put an end to all conflicts. For this reason, she defied the taboo of consuming the fruit of the Shinju, becoming one with the Holy Tree's power. For her deed of single-handedly ending the wars, Kagaya was worshipped as the rabbit goddess. Over time, however, the worship she originally had held as a princess turned to fear, and the then powerless people started regarding her as a demon for the power that she now held, which left her isolated and alone. This mistrust ultimately convinced her to forsake everyone, and Kagaya sought to prevent humanity from causing any further harm to the world by trapping them within the infinite Tsukiyomi and assimilating the victims into the Shinju, some of which turned into white Zetsu. Kagaya later gave birth to two sons. Hagoromo and Hamura, both of whom inherited the same powerful chakra she wielded and unique Jutsu along with it. Angered at the power gained by her children, Kagaya and the Shinju melded into an entity that would later become known as the Ten Tails with one singular goal reclaim the chakra she felt was rightfully hers. The Ten Tails rampaged throughout the lands until Kagaya's sons were defeated and sealed the beast and their mother away. Before her sons could completely seal her, Kagaya's will manifested in the form of Black Zetsu. This manifestation would soon begin its machination to revive Kagaya. Her son Hagoromo would later teach humanity to use chakra as a way to connect to one another rather than weaponizing it as Kagaya had done before. But the agenda of reviving its creator, Black Zetsu manipulated the sage's sons Indra and his descendants. The Achiha clan, along with Asura's descendants. The Senju clan, all in an attempt to get one of them to awaken the Rinnegan. Madara Achiha would eventually succeed in doing so, and Black Zetsu began secretly manipulating shinobi history events to have Kagaya revived. Which shocked the last four survivors of the infinite Tsukiyomi, two of the survivors are the reincarnations of the sage's sons. One has a blonde spiky-haired boy with cerulean eyes, who wears an orange and black tracksuit with a spiral symbol on his upper shoulder, and he also wears black shinobi sandals. But right now he is in six-path sage mode, light-colored coat, but with a dark-colored bodysuit underneath. Unlike his sage mode, nine tails chakra mode, and tailed beast mode cloak, there is no orange pigmentation around his eyes, his skin does not glow like the rest of his body, and his eyes are yellow instead of orange or red. The bodysuit covers his torso, reaches down his arms to the knuckles and down his legs, stopping just above his sandals. It has a light-colored circle where the original seal was placed, as well as Magatama around his collar. The coat has the typical markings of the six-path sage technique, a Rinnegan above nine Magatama, on its back. Furthermore, he had six round orbs behind him which calls truth-seeking balls, wielding two of them as short staff. This boy is Naruto Uzumaki, the show-off, number one unpredictable noisy ninja, number one hyperactive knucklehead ninja, child of the prophecy, savior of this world, hero of the hidden leaf, Kanoha's miracle boy, nine-tailed Jinch Kriki, and Asura's reincarnation. Once the dead last of the ninja academy, but now has become one of the most powerful shinobi in the whole shinobi world. Next is a black raven hair boy with onyx eyes, but right now his right eye is red with three tomo, as pupil then his left eye is a ripple-like pattern which spreads over the eyeball, with red sclera and eye rides, some also containing a pattern of several tomo. Is known as the Rinnegan once held by the sage of the sixth path. He wears a high-collared short-sleeved shirt with a zipper and a red and white fan symbol at the back of his shirt. He also wore blue wrist warmers, dark blue pants with a blue cloth hanging from halfway up his stomach to his knees, along with black arm guards that covered his forearms and stretched up to reach his upper biceps. He also wore a purple rope belt around his waist, tied in a bow, in which he carries his sword. This boy is known as Sasuke Uchiha, the Dark Avenger and Indra's reincarnation. Who walked the path of darkness because of his brother who sacrificed everything for his village. 
when he learns the truth of his brother's action, he wants revenge on the people who made his brother kill off his clan. Also he once tried to kill his friend with an assassination, through his best friend's chest not twice, but thrice. He stabbed his best friend three times. But right now he and his best friend are working together to stop a mad woman who wants to continue the act that casts the whole world into a dreamland. Both Naruto and Sasuke receive an incredible gift that was given to them by the Sage of the Six Paths himself. Hagoromo Tsutsuki the elder son of Kagayo Tsutsuki, who sealed his mother in the first place. Both of them met him when both were almost dead. Hagoromo spoke to them in limbo where they were in between life and death. He revealed to them the history of the shinobi world and why it is now. He asks both of them to stop Madara before his mother appears. He gave both young shinobi a gift, he gave them each of his power. He gives Naruto Yang half of his power, a light circle mark appears on his right palm, as symbols, as Naruto had proven he received Sage of the Six Path power, and all nine sealed in him. For Sasuke he received the Rinnegan on his left eye, and the yin half of Hagoromo power Sasuke obtained a dark crescent moon mark on his left palm. Now both receive incredible gifts from the Sage, both young shinobi will stop Kagaya and free the world from Endless, with their comrades who will help them. One is their teammate Sakura Haruno, she has pink hair and green eyes. She wears a standard uniform for the ninja of Konoha, once a weak fangirl with only eyes for Sasuke. But now a capable Kanachi, who's trained by the fifth Hokage Tsunade Senju. And last, but not the least, their sensei Kakashi Haddock. The copy ninja, the ninja who copied a thousand, and Sharingan Kakashi. He had silver hair and a mask that covered his mouth, he wore an elite Konohan in flak jacket, dark blue pants, and a long sleeve shirt, with the addition of wearing shorter fingerless gloves with metal plates on the backhand. He also wears a chain necklace. He also wears his forehead protector on a simple blue band, tilted to the left to cover the Sharingan, which along with the mask, obscures all by his right eye. After receiving a gift from his dead best friend Abito, he obtained the other half of the Sharingan. Abito Uchiha, once a member of Team Minato, was believed to have died during the Third Shinobi World War, but in truth survived with the help of Madara Uchiha. Abito tried to return to Konoha, but after witnessing the death of the girl he loved at the hands of his best friend, he succumbed to the curse of hatred, becoming a missing nin, and dedicating his life to ending world conflict, using Madara's identity, as well the alias Tobi. For years, Abito manipulated Akatsuki from the shadows to further his ambitions before eventually going public with his agenda and starting the Fourth Shinobi World War. However, after his plan failed, he was finally redeemed and eventually sacrificed himself to protect the world. He was also responsible for the death of Naruto's parents, but Naruto forgave him he also knows that his parents forgave him. Once their enemy, but he became their greatest ally. Now they're ready to face Kagaya, she teleports them to five different dimensions. One was lava then ice, now she teleported them in a desert where gravity is heavier than normal. Naruto told Sasuke he knows a seal to seal Kagaya, it's the only way to stop her. After Ibido's death, Black Zetsu taunted Naruto about the Uchiha's death and was shocked when Naruto retaliated by severing Kagaya arm carrying Black Zetsu and pinning it to the ground. After getting hit by Naruto's tailed beast powered Rasen Shuriken, the Ten Tails Chakra within her reacted violently to the chakra of the other tailed beasts, transforming her into a rabbit-like chakra monster, which according to Black Zetsu, was a form she couldn't control. It randomly began launching chakra arms that instantly assimilated whatever it touched, one of the chakra arms was about to attack Sakura. Naruto asks Sasuke to use the Rinnegan to save her, but it seems he won't make it. But a yellow Susanoo saved her, Naruto cheered, but it wasn't Sasuke who did the Susanoo. It was Kakashi who used the Susanoo, he gained the other half of the Sharingan from Abito. But this Kakashi joins the battle he prepares to attack an unstable Kagaya and launch two giant shuriken that are shaped like his Manjikam Sharingan. He proceeded to warp several of Kagaya's chakra arms away. Despite Black Zetsu's fears, Kagaya ultimately regained control and formed the tailed beast mass into a giant truth-seeking ball. Kagaya regains her control, and Black Zetsu watches at the sideline. Team 7 prepared for quite possibly their final mission. Everybody, we must save the world, Kakashi declared. Yeah. Okay Team 7 agreed. Well then I'm immortal if either of you dies you won't be able seal me stated Kagaya, whom should I kill? I'm your opponent, bitch. Shouted Naruto. No, we'll attack together. Sasuke counters she'll be less focused because she's scared of being sealed. Both Naruto and Sasuke fly upward at her, but she is a little far from where they are. Kagaya sprouted three bone-like spikes from her back and launched them towards them. But Kakashi saw it, and he intercepted it to hit his Susanoo, but one spike impaled him. Black Zetsu smiles mother, you've been doing nothing but absorb energy this whole time your strength and speed vastly overwhelm theirs. When they thought the bone spike impaled Kakashi, Kagaya, and Black Zetsu frown. 
that the bone spike passed through Kakashi, using his new Sharingan all attack passed through him and unleashed a black lightning on his hand. This really is a great ability, Abito the power let things slip right through you, Kakashi thought and now, I'm gonna be bringing back this technique. He charges at Kagaya with his black lightning and penetrates Kagaya's defenses to land a decisive blow on her right arm. Tamui Rikiri. Mother. Shouted Black Zetsu this is bad, her right arm. From this Naruto and Sasuke charge from each of her sides. Naruto on the left and Sasuke on the right. There's not enough time to open the gateway to escape into another dimension Black Zetsu thought if that's the case he used Kagaya's left arm that was severed from Naruto's attack earlier to open a portal with a bone spike ready to launch. Kagaya saw a small portal on her right thinking Black Zetsu defended from Indra's resurrection, using her left arm, she launched a bone spike to Naruto precising through him. Suddenly Naruto appeared in Sasuke's place. The one she hit was a clone, while Sasuke hid behind Naruto's clone. Naruto distracts Kagaya with his clones, Sasuke waits for the opportunity to leap into action. Black Zetsu launches his attack in the portal that appears on the right side of Kagaya, where Naruto is. When the attack launches through the portal, Kakashi uses his Kamui to warp the attack and save Naruto. But that Sasuke swaps places with one of Naruto's shadow clones and appears next to Kagaya. Thinking way out, maybe teleported to a new dimension. But all it will just backfire, so the only place she could escape was up. As she escapes Naruto and Sasuke by flying upwards, Sakura dropped into action, declaring that, as women, they weren't supposed to underestimate each other. She then proceeded to send the rabbit goddess plummeting back towards her teammates with a single punch, snapping off one of Kagaya's horns in the process. What? Black Zetsu was shocked, seeing his mother defeated by a bunch of kids. That's picture perfect Kakashi thought right now the way all of you are together Kakashi's eyes smile I like you. Now? Shanaro. Yeah. Team 7 shouted together. Immediately upon contact, Sasuke and Naruto begin the ultimate sealing technique. The 6 path Shibaku Tensei. Kagaya wonders how she, the ancestor of all chakra, could be defeated by mere fragments of chakra, as she reverts back to the demonic statue of the outer path and is encased by the landscape, creating an enormous satellite similar in size to the moon, and releasing the two. Before Kagaya seals completely she performs her last, she opens a portal large enough for one person. She grabs Naruto like her life depended on it, will it be? Hey. Let me go bitch. Naruto shouted. You. Destroy everything for that, you will disappear. Kagaya declares. As she drains every last drop of chakra in him, Naruto feels weak. She throws him to her portal and never seen again. Naruto? Everybody shouted. Sasuke immediately thrust his blade through Kagaya's heart before she was sealed completely. Not before Kakashi found Black Zetsu and threw him with Kagaya within the seal. The shinobi world has lost one of their greatest heroes. His name will never be forgotten, the one who put the world together toward peace. The child that everyone doubted, but now he inspired them to maintain peace for the shinobi world. That boy's name is... Naruto Uzumaki. Drip. 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 What's that noise? Sounds like water is dripping somewhere when Naruto opened his eyes, he saw a light shine on him. It was a light bolt that shone on him. He looks around his surroundings, he sees a green wall with moss on them. Then he notices a smell, where he is. Wunu, what's that smell? It stinks around here Naruto thought okay, green wall with moss on them, funky smell. It seems I'm in a sewer, just great, simply great. He noticed that his body feels different. He could tell it was much weaker and that he was naked. What the hell? Why am I naked? And why do I feel like I want to pee or something? Naruto tries to lift his arms, when he looks at his hand he notices a chubby baby's hand. When he realizes what happened to him, he freaks out. What the fuck? Why am I a baby again? He tries to recall something before he was here. His thoughts were cut short when he heard a sound. Okay calm down, let's recall. I'm in a freaking sewer, I don't feel any chakra nearby, especially in me, and I turn into a freaking baby. And I want to pee. Okay, maybe Kurama can help me, Naruto thought. Kurama he called the fox, but got no response. Naruto remembered something, that Kuruma and the others were released before Kagaya was sealed. Oh yeah, Kuruma is not in me anymore Naruto thought sadly, that Kuruma is not in him anymore. It's Kindle only without his fox fuzzball friend. Kuruma will probably yell at him for being depressed because he's not in him anymore. Naruto thought maybe this situation won't be so bad, maybe he can make this work. He can still be, yeah positive, think positive. Naruto tried to move his body, but couldn't. Damn it, now what? When Naruto was about to do something, he heard footsteps. What's that? The footsteps started to sound louder. Maybe somebody is here, I'm here. Somebody help me. Naruto cried like a baby, the footsteps stopped, then it moved again. Yes. 
over here. Help. The steps become closer and closer. Then a shadow figure steps out from the corner, Naruto's eyes widened. What he saw was a gigantocrat wearing a monk's robe when the rat turned its head to Naruto and started to approach him. A giant rat. I don't want to be eaten. Naruto cried, the rat approached and looked at him for a moment. Then the rat grabbed him and held him up high. Please don't eat me Mr. Rat, I'm too young to be dead, literally Naruto thought he was about to be eaten, but he felt warmth wrap around him. Don't worry little one. It's okay everything will be fine, I'm not here to hurt you, said the giant rat. Naruto calms down and looks at the rat's eyes. He saw wisdom behind those eyes and fatherly warmth in them. The rat looked at the young baby's eyes for a second. He saw a hardened warrior with so many burdens he carried, a strong spirit, a will that will never break. But then it changes into something warm like a shield to protect anyone, and an aura that's bright like the sun. The rat shook his head, then looked at the baby again. Okay, what's a cute baby like you doing in a place like this? Naruto looks at him with a fake confused look, maybe you were abandoned. Naruto frowns from that, the rat rubs his chin thinking what the best course of action is. The rat thought for a moment, then he smiled at the blonde baby. Would you like a family? Little one said the rat, Naruto giggles he always wants to have a family. He never had a family in his early days when he was still at Konoha. So, for now on you will be my son, and you also have some brothers too, said the rat with a smile, as he held Naruto up high. From all excitement Naruto's pee leaks and gushes out on the rat's cloth. The rat frowns that the baby blonde pee on him, he looks at Naruto's relieving face. The rat sighed yes, you will fit right in. What? Can you blame me, I'm a baby Naruto smirked mentally at the rat. Oh, I forgot I am Splinter, said Splinter, the baby nodded. As if he understands. What will I call you? By coincidence a ramen cup drifted along the sewer line, and Splinter picked it up. He looked inside the empty ramen cup, but it wasn't empty. The only thing in there was a fish cake. Splinter smiles well, little one I will call you. Naruto, how's that? Naruto giggles and smiles at him. I take that as a yes, said Splinter with a smile on his face. Come now, let's meet your new family said Splinter, as he walked back to his home with Naruto in hand. It has been 8 years now, and a 10 year old Naruto was stuck in this world. At first he thought he was in the same world where he came from, but after he discovered a few things about the current world. For instance, technology here is more advanced than his world. He soon realized that he's not an elemental nation anymore. He also discovered his chakra pathway is shattered and doesn't know if it could be fixed. He couldn't perform any, he still felt he had chakra, though it was the same amount before he unlocked chakra cloak mode. Naruto was devastated, learning he will never return to his home, never see his friends again, and never be Hokage. Naruto also missed Kurama, they may have been bitter enemies before in the past. But during the fourth shinobi war, he treated Kurama as a friend, a friend that could never be replaced. But Naruto thought his misfortune couldn't be so bad. Beginning a new life with a real childhood, well technically he couldn't contact with other human beings. But hey it's better than his previous childhood and a family he never had. Speaking of family, Naruto is the oldest of his newfound brothers by one year, and they're turtles. Naruto couldn't really complain, he loved his brothers very dearly. The brothers look up to him, he is the oldest after all, and he is slightly taller than the turtles. Second oldest is Leonardo, the blue bandana turtle. He can be a little serious at times, cool, and level-headed. A good leadership quality, he always asked Naruto to help on his ninjutsu. Then there's Raphael, the red bandana turtle, and the third oldest roughly the same age as Leo, Raphael can be brash, but loyal, easily tempered, and sarcastic at times. He maybe hides his true feelings toward his brothers, but Naruto can't see it through. Raph had the most love in his siblings, he was willing to do anything to protect his family. Sometimes when Raph thinks he is not strong enough, Naruto always cheers him up and tells him he is not weak. Then there's Donatello, the purple bandana turtle, and the second youngest of the siblings, Donnie is the smartest of the group, always tinkering on his gadgets, sometimes that habit gets in the way of his training. Naruto doesn't have a problem with Donatello investing more than training, but sometimes he pranks him so could train a bit more. There's also Naruto's pranking partner Michelangelo or Mikey, the orange bandana, and the youngest of all of the turtles. The immature one of the group, Mikey, doesn't take anything seriously sometimes. But that makes Naruto and Mikey the closest, he's like Naruto. But one Mikey is enough for this family, Naruto is just more mature than Mikey. And finally their father, Master Splinter, the wise old rat. Their sensei who teaches them the art of ninjutsu and the Bushido code, Master Splinter, teaches his son so they could defend themselves. At first Splinter suspected Naruto is little different, he learns faster, matures faster, and wiser than the turtle's brothers. He could talk to Naruto about it, but maybe he should wait until Naruto's ready to tell him. 
Naruto's odd family, but he won't trade it for the world. Naruto is training with his master Splinter, while Donatello and Mikey are doing their course. As for Leo and Raph, they're playing somewhere in the sewer. Naruto is wearing his black martial arts outfit with an orange lining, and he's also wearing a pendant shaped like half yin yang symbol, except that the yang symbol wraps around his neck. As he balances himself on a bamboo pole with only one toe, with his training in sage mode before, he can stay still on the bamboo no problem. As Master Splinter supervises his training, he lectures Naruto about balance. Good my son, balance is important for a shinobi, and they must learn balance. Naruto stays still for a few more minutes, until Master Splinter calls it a day. Okay that's enough, my son. Naruto got the signal, his jump front flip off the pole, and landed gracefully. That's enough for today's lesson, said Splinter. Hi, Sensei. Naruto bows at his master. Now get your brothers, it is almost time for dinner. Naruto nodded and went outside of the lair to find his brothers. Now where are those two? Naruto talks to himself. When Naruto reaches a closed up section of the sewer, he sees the section is not so closed up anymore. Naruto went to investigate, as he walked inside of the tunnel he heard a roar. He quickly rushes towards the source. When Naruto reached the end of the tunnel, he saw Raphael get trashed by a huge white alligator, while Leo stood there. Could I offer a strategy tip? Said Leo. No, as Raph dragged down to the water then resurfaced again, I got him on the rope, he's right I want him. Naruto fascinated. why does Raph have to be stubborn? When Raph gets slammed onto the wall, Naruto immediately grabs a nearby long stick and rushes towards him. Raph. Cries Naruto. Naruto Leo was surprised by the sudden arrival of his brother. Raph groans and looks up, the huge alligator is right in front of him and ready to eat him. As Raph was about to be eaten, Naruto shoved the stick into the gator's mouth, preventing to close it. Leo? Naruto calls out Leo. Right, Leo leaped toward the top of the gator and pressed his finger somewhere in the jawline of the gator, making it fall asleep. What do you do? What do you do? Questioned Raph. Pressure point, as Leo hopped off the gator's head. Pressure point. Asked Raph, as Leo was about to answer Naruto's answer for him. Sensei taught him, and Naruto stood behind them with a stern expression. He, oh hey Naruto. Raph chuckled nervously along with Leo. Why did you two go in here? It was dangerous, you know, Naruto scolded them both. We're sorry, both hang their heads down, Naruto sighs. That's okay, Naruto smiles, as he patted their head. The important thing is that you're safe. Now who still wants to follow the leader? The turtles got confused. As the leader, follow me back home. Naruto took off, the two brothers looked at each other and smiled. They raced to catch up to Naruto. Hey. Wait up. Wait for us. Hey. Slow down, all three of them laugh as they race towards home. Just another day in Naruto's new life. Weeks passed, the brothers stuck inside their home because of the rain and caused the sower to overflow with a lot of sower water. Every turtle and human doing their own thing. Raph was taking a nap, Donnie was building some kind of remote control to a race car, Naruto was training on his own, and also Leo was training in his katas, while Mikey listened to music. Until Mikey decides to mess Leo around, Mikey smiles deviously. Hey, Leo, did you see my game guy anywhere? But Leo didn't respond, his concentration was impressive, he stayed still, not even blinking. Hello Mikey waves his hand in front of Leo, but still no response. He tries to make a funny face, at least it changes Leo's expression, but still doesn't respond. Mikey hated to be ignored, he tried to blow a balloon, then popped it in front of Leo. But Leo didn't even flinch, Mikey got frustrated, then put funny glasses on Leo and showed them to him in a mirror. Still no response, then Mikey pulled out the big gun. He held two whole onions, he tossed them in the air and put them into his mouth. He then ate it and then belched on Leo's face. Same, as before no response, Mikey grit his teeth if Leo didn't laugh how about he say ouch. He brought out his nunchaku when Mickey was about to hit Leo, Naruto entered the room with a pie in his hand. When saw the scene he raised an eyebrow. Mikey, what are you doing? Asked Naruto. Trying to make Leo laugh. That's not how to make Leo laugh, said Naruto. Oh, how would you make him laugh then? Like this, Naruto quickly tosses the pie on Mikey's face, with that Leo starts to snicker then full blow laugh. As he saw Mikey's entire face covered in pie, Mikey licked his face. Blueberry. The three brothers laugh. Just another day in Naruto's household. Days passed after the heavy rainstorm, the sower was overflowing with debris and it was clogging up the tunnel. Donnie finished his remote-controlled car and showed it to Leo and Naruto. He asks if they want to see it go. Leo declines because he has some more training to do, but Naruto agrees to see it run. 
Donnie smiles and drags Naruto outside the lair, Donnie shows off the performance of his toy car. Check out the turning radius of this thing, Naruto. Said to Donnie, as the toy car kept on going, until it made a sharp U-turn and fell into the edge of the water. Donnie winces. Remind me to never let you behind a wheel from a real car, Naruto stated. Hang on, I'll get it. Donnie ran towards his toy car, he grabbed a stick and tried it to get his toy. He was about to get his car until a large debris knocked it further and made Donnie fall into the water. Donnie? Naruto cries as the water drags Donnie into a small waterfall. As Donnie fell into the water, his foot got stuck on large debris. Naruto? Donnie tries to move, I'm stuck and I can't get my leg free. Naruto? As the water kept on rising, Donnie shouted again. Naruto? Until he was completely submerged in water. Naruto dove into the water, he saw Donnie about to lose consciousness. Naruto quickly grabbed the wood that Donnie got stuck on off of him, he grabbed Donnie and pulled him to shore. They got onto shore, they painted, and Donnie asked, what, you didn't get the car? Naruto gaped and whacked Donnie on the noggin, seriously? Naruto glared at him. Donnie laughs nervously, he, sorry. Come on, let's go home. Both Donnie and Naruto stood up and walked back to the lair. Should I build a remote control boat next time, Donnie smiled weakly until Donnie got whacked on the head again. Donnie rubs his head. Another normal day. Weeks pass, they run out of food and supplies. Master Splinter, Naruto, and Leo travel around the sower to gather food and supplies. Both Splinter and Naruto have a conversation while Leonardo trails behind, so he couldn't hear what they were saying. Sensei we should get some real food from the surface, Naruto insisted, as he picked a few supplies and put it in his garbage bag. No Naruto, the surface had a lot of dangers. Said Splinter, as he grabbed a good pile of wood. You know I can take care of myself, Naruto snorted. Yes I know, but your brothers may follow you. Sensei, I can be right back. Naruto picks up an old rusting shove, before they notice I'm gone. Splinter put his hands on Naruto's shoulders, Naruto you're their big brother, they look up to you. They may follow you to the surface and get hurt, I know you won't like that. Naruto pouted, but sighs after, I know sensei, Naruto looks at his sensei, but at least let me go to the surface near a convenience store, so I can get some instant ramen, some pizza, and some fruits and vegetables, so we can use the seeds to grow our own. Splinter thought for a moment, but ultimately he sighs. Okay, just because you're good at stealth doesn't mean you won't watch out for anything dangerous. Splinter warned Naruto, don't worry. Naruto gives out a thumb up, I'll be careful. After you said that, for some reason it makes me even more worried. Splinter deadpanned. Come my sons, there are more useful items on the upper level. As he signaled his sons, he climbed the ladder. Leo grabbed some kind of old box and put it in his garbage bag, when Leo reached the ladder he looked up and gulped. Leo's legs shaking from fear, Naruto grabs the shoulder and smiles. Come on, Leo, if you fall I will catch your promise. Leo relaxed a bit and nodded, he started to climb while Naruto was behind him. This tunnel stretches for miles in all directions, said Splinter, to avoid losing your way, you must stop and observe your surroundings carefully. Leo looked up and down, as he looked down he saw how high he was. His legs started to shake till his entire body shaking. Come on, Leo, we're almost at the top. Splinter calls out Leo. I can't. Leonardo you must. Leo. Leo looks down at Naruto with an encouraging smile, don't look down, look at Sensei, and only Sensei. Naruto tried to encourage Leonardo more, give me your bag. Just focus only on Sensei, take a deep breath and release slowly. Leo nodded as he gave his bag to Naruto, he looked at Splinter and took a deep breath and released it slowly. He slowly started to climb. Thus don't look down on Leo, no matter what. Said Naruto with an encouraging tone. Leo continues to climb up, slowly. When he reaches the top, Splinter grabs his hand and pulls him up. When Leo finally landed safely, he started to tear up and hug Splinter tightly. Splinter comforts his son, as Leo sees Naruto reach the top he quickly tackles and hugs as he sobs on Naruto's shoulder. It's okay, Leo. Naruto comforts his brother, everything will be fine. Leo continued crying on Naruto's shoulder. Weeks follow, Naruto and Splinter decide to train Leonardo to get over his fear of height by slowly building his confidence. They started small bamboo blocks for Leonardo to stand on, they blindfolded him in the second week. Week by week, they increase the height of the bamboo blocks until it is high enough. Now my son, remove your blindfold. As Leo removed his blindfold, he saw he was so high up he lost his balance and fell on the safety mat below. Splinter shook his head and Naruto sighs. Until Naruto gets an idea, he and Splinter discuss how Leo can get over his fear. 
Few days later, Splinter, Naruto, and Leo went to get food and supplies in the upper level again. Naruto suggests they go to a shortcut so they go topside faster. When they reach the end of the tunnel, Leo's fear resurfaces as he looks down on just how high they are. We must continue on Leonardo, said Splinter, as he started to climb on a very rusting pipe. Come on Leo you can climb on my back if you want. Naruto also started to climb the rusting pipe. You two go ahead, said Leo with a shaking tone, I go around the long way. That will take hours Leo. Said Naruto, as he climbed the pipe, the pipe started to tilt from the weight from Naruto and Splinter. That's okay, I could use exercises. As both Naruto and Splinter reach higher the pipe tilts further until it is bent like it is about to snap. Splinter was about to fall until Naruto caught his hand, while his other hand hung on the pipe they're hanging for dear life. Master Splinter. Naruto. Leo cries. Seeing his family is in danger, Leo immediately leaps to the pipe and looks down, afraid to fall. Don't look down, don't look down. He cast away his fear so he can rescue his family. Naruto. Grab on, Naruto swung Splinter towards Leo, so Splinter could reach Leo's hand. Leo catches Splinter's hand so he pulls him up, while Splinter pulls Naruto up, relieved he pulls them, but they're not safe yet. When they are about to leave the pipe begins to tilt again. We won't make it in time, Leo cries. So we make our own exit, Naruto pulls out a grappling hook and tosses it onto a steel bar. Naruto gives it to Splinter, he puts Naruto on his left shoulder and Leo on right. They swung across into a tunnel and landed safely. But you two could yourself at any time, asked Leo. Of course Leo. But without that you wouldn't face your fear, Naruto explained with a smile, while Splinter smiled too, and nodded. Come my son, let's gather our supplies, Splinter insisted, as he walked past them. Hi master, Naruto, and Leo Bo, as they catch up to their master. Same old, same old day for Naruto's family. Months pass, the brothers start to suspect Naruto has gone to surface every time he runs an errand for master Splinter. Master Splinter always told them never to go to the surface, but they ask each other why only Naruto went topside. Why couldn't they? Well, of course Naruto is a human. He can blend in better among humans, but that won't stop their curiosity. One day they saw Naruto leave the liar and headed topside, he was asked by Master Splinter to get some food from a nearby convenience store. The turtles followed carefully when they saw him climb up a ladder that led to the surface. Naruto opened the lid and exited the sewer, the turtles waited for Naruto to leave. When Naruto had gone to the convenience store, the turtles immediately climbed the ladder and opened the lid. Unfortunately they weren't strong enough to open the lid, despite Naruto's size being stronger than the turtles. Unable to open the lid, they stop and try again next time. Another month passed, and Naruto went to the surface again. Once more the turtles follow him again, with their strength training this time they open the lid. No cutting in, Raph protest. So, move your big fat shell. Mikey shot back. When they got outside for the very first time, they were astonished how big and beautiful the outside world is. Well if you could count the garbage can, a garbage filled dumpster, trash everywhere, and the rotting foods. So yeah, this was beautiful compared to the sower. It's amazing, all this opening space. Said Leo with awe in his voice. Man. Master Splinter and Naruto have been holding out on us, said Raph, as he marvels at the scenery. It's it's. Beautiful. Raph couldn't describe the wonder of the outside world so, Donnie finished for him. Right around the corner, two preteen boys were about to go home. Until they spot something that makes them worry. There were a couple of kids playing street hockey on the street. It's Danny Donna and his wolf pack, said the short blue hair and glasses kid named Stevie, he is wearing a snow cap, a light blue short cut sleeves hoodie, brownish baggy pants, and blue sneakers. Man, those guys think they own the street said the slightly long blue hair kid named Arnie wearing a red loose t-shirt and blue baggy pants with red sneakers. How come they're gonna play in front of my steps TV, asked Arnie, the same apartment that also has a convenience store right next to it. As Naruto grocery shopping behind the window of the store, never realized what was happening outside, as he was busy shopping. How did he get money to buy all the stuff he needed there? Sometimes there are some lost wallets floating around the sewer, he picks them up and uses the money for food and supplies for his family. Now returning to the two boys. I can help you, as Stevie declares to help his friend, we're standing up to them. Until he looked at them he gulped, maybe. I like that too, they beat the shit out of us. Arnie admits, you go on around and go home, I'll be okay. Be careful, I'll see you tomorrow. Stevie said farewell to his friend. As Arnie calmly walks up to his apartment until the bullies notice him and approach. Hey guys, it's Arnie Dork. You forgot to pay your toll yesterday. They demanded their rent fee from Arnie, as the leader kept on shoving on him. This is our street. I don't want any trouble, said Arnie. 
Well you've got trouble, don't you guys? The bullies started to surround Arnie, when the leader was about to hit him, Arnie made a break for it, and ran, as fast, as he could. The bullies follow suit, as they pass by the convenience store. Naruto was about to pay the clerk when he saw Arnie being chased by the bullies, Naruto immediately paid the clerk. Keeping the change, Naruto bolted out of the store with his shopping bag in hand, leaving a confused clerk. While the turtles play King of the Hill version of Trash. I am Raphael's King of the Trash. Raph shoves Mikey and kicks Donnie, as he still retains his title, until Leo flip him over and declare him the new king. Sorry Raph you're the trash, I'm the king. All hail Leo king of the trash dump, Mikey decrees Leo the king, as they play their game Donnie hears footsteps coming their way. Eyes. Someone comes, they immediately hide under the dumpster, while Naruto uses his acrobatic skill to leap to the rooftop of the building to see what is going on. Arnie turns into a dead-end alleyway, regretting his decision, as he turns back, but it was too late the bullies corner him, oh crap. He muttered. Nowhere to run, said the leader, no escape the bullies began to beat Arnie with their hockey sticks. The turtles watched the beating until he had enough. Somebody gonna help the kid, Leo insisted. Yeah, finally some real action. Raph agrees, before they all agree to do it. One of the bullies got hit by a flower pot on the head from above, ouch. At least he has a helmet. Who did that? Asked the bullies one of his friends. The turtles were surprised, Leo asked Raph. Did you do that? Raph shook, no. He turned Mikey, Mikey. He shook, and asked on, he also shook. Then another bully got hit by an egg, then all the bullies got hit by dozens of eggs. Hey. What the the leader got hit on the head by egg, when look at the sky another hit on his face, and other stuff started to fall down, flower pots were dangerous if hit you got hit on the noggin from high up, of course, the one who throw it never hit the bullies, other stuff fall on the mar, some tomato, fruit, and vegetables. Let's get out of here. The bullies flee like chicken, the leader glares at Arnie before leaving. Next time Jones. The one who threw the food was Naruto, he sighs. There goes our food, well at least I save our instant ramen, and microwave pizzas. The turtles and Arnie were confused what just happened earlier. They shook it off and forgot what happened. As Arnie leaves, the turtles decide to teach the kid how to defend himself. They disguise themselves with a red cap, brown jacket, tan yellow long sleeve t-shirt, blue baggy pants, and cerulean sneakers. The one up first is Leo, as turtles discuss their plan to teach the kid. Up above Naruto listening to their plan, he sighs. This will not end well. Naruto saw Leo approach Arnie, saying he shouldn't be a bully, and it's all about honor. Naruto rolled his eyes when he saw Leo would teach the kid. He follows them to the rooftop, Naruto hides on top of a watering tank. Leo and Arnie sat down in the lotus position, as Leo talks about the importance of focusing the mind. First of all, you have to be serious about wanting to change things. Said Leo, you have to feel the power. Connect with the power. Find your inner core. Your honor. Your true heart, have you found it yet? I don't think so. Ah, little dude, I can't feel my legs. Arnie can't focus, and the position makes his legs go numb, but he tries his best to obey Leo's instructions. Naruto facipums, as continue obverse them. When Leo told Arnie to mediate, he left for a moment, which was then Leo switched one of his brothers. Naruto waited to teach Arnie, and he appeared later. He observes them a bit more. When Naruto saw an orange bandana, it seems Mikey turned. Ready for more learning? Well, trying to be serious, breath, and stuff to find my inner strength like you said. Said Arnie, but it kinda makes my head hurt. What are you kidding me? Mikey exclaimed, get up, get up. Forget all that baloney, but the first and most important lesson is this. You need the right attitude. Arnie blinked in confusion, and part of having a winning attitude is having a cool battle cry, a heroic superhero kind of battle cry. As Mikey goes, do a superhero pose, like in the comic books. Naruto groans, while Arnie blink again in confusion. I got it, Sama. Mikey insists Arnie try it. Or what the unfortunately, he can't remember it. Naruto facipums once again, and groans, as his hand covers his face, oh come on, even a five-year-old can remember that. It's Goro-sama, it's mean Mr. Thunder. Goro-sama, it's perfect for you. If you yell out Goro-goro-sama, while charging into battle. As he demonstrates, and does a series of punches, your foe will flee like a coward for you. Memories, I was like that once. Naruto thought. Oh, I really want to see that. Said Mikey with excitement, come on, let's try it. Aw, oh, they should cream me again. As Mikey takes Arnie down to the alley, Naruto follows them. Nope with your new cool battle cry. Remember Goro-sama, now go get them. Mikey playful punches onto his ribs and encourages him to do the battle cry toward the bullies who are playing street hockey. Goro-goro-rama. 
Arnie forgot the battle cry again, the bullies spotted him and confused what he was saying, but they didn't care they rushed forward and beat up him again. Oh, that gonna hurt in the morning. Naruto commented on the rooftop so he could get a better view. A moment later, it's Donatello's turn to try to teach Arnie. While Naruto still hides in the same watering tank. Naruto's eyes twitch, Donnie teaching him chess. Naruto understands what Donnie is doing, but he got it all wrong. Arnie is not serious, as Leo, he is not unpredictable like Mikey, he definitely not smart, as Donatello, he could be like Raph more of a brawler. All that Arnie would need is someone that teaches him correctly in the right order of things. But for now it's not doing much of a good job. It's important to really think your actions through, it's like a game of chess where you have to be thinking three or four moves ahead of your opponent, planning to know what's coming. Donnie explains that Arnie plans his strategies ahead of time. But Arnie struggled with the complexity of the game, Donnie waited patiently for Arnie to make a move. 30 minutes pass, Arnie hasn't made a move. Both Naruto and Donnie fall asleep till a bird lands on Donatello's head. He wakes up and decides to leave, switching with Raph now. When Arnie spoke Naruto woke up and saw its Raph turn. This gonna be good Naruto thought. I have been studying abroad like you said, but I still don't get it. I like horsey though, I try to think it through, but I don't know. Seriously? I knew Shoji when I was his age Naruto though. Listen, pal, the first and most important lesson is. Never think. Never. Just act and react and always attack. Said Raph. I sure wish you make up your mind. Be serious, use your battle cry, think it through, and next never think, I don't get it. Arnie complains and wishes that his mentor would make up his mind on how he should behave. What you need is a weapon. It's all about the weapons. Ralph insists, we need to find you some kind of weapon. They look around, if there is any weapon lying around. Raph got a little frustrated until Arnie looked at the board. So they decide to use the chess piece for a weapon, Raph sets up some cans and tosses the game pieces at them, knocking them all down. Raph hands Arnie some chess pieces, you try. Hey, said Arnie weakly, he throws the game pieces, but they hit the ground, rebound off the wall, and come back to pelt the youths. Maybe you need a better target. Let's do what you do in combat. Oh boy, not again. After Naruto hears what Raph said, Naruto follows them. Raph leads Arnie back to the streets and tells him to attack his enemies with chess pieces. Arnie hesitates but approaches the thugs and throws the chess pieces at them. The projectiles missed by a mile, and the result got beat up again. After getting beat up again, Raph returned home before Master Splinter noticed he was gone. Arnie returns to the rooftop waiting for his mentor. Arnie sighs, I won't be strong ever. When a shadow overcast behind him, he turned around expecting his mentor. But instead he was greeted by white fox mask boy wearing an orange hoodie, slightly taller than his mentor. You seem troubled. Asked the fox boy. You can say that, said Arnie, as he sighs, I just don't get it, I try what the red hat kid said. But everything backfires. Maybe, I should give up. So, you give up like that? You're weaker than I thought. The fox boy mocked Arnie. Arnie got angry, they're stronger than I am. That's not an excuse to give up, fox boy stated, will you be bullied forever, will ya? Arnie muttered, as he clenched his fist. What was that? I can't hear you. I said Arnie muttered again. What? Again can't hear you? I said no. I won't be bullied ever again. Arnie cries. But Fox Boy nodded. Would you teach me how to fight for real? Asked Arnie with a nervous tone. No, Arnie hung his head down in sadness. But I can give you advice, Arnie lifted his head up, you can only be strong when you want to protect something. Protect something. Arnie got a blank expression, like what? They're precious people. But. Before Arnie asked more, the Fox Boy disappeared. Arnie looks around, but the Fox Boy is nowhere to be seen. He scratched his head in confusion a few moments later. All four turtles are in the alley, but only one Leo is disguised and visible. Okay, let us try out everything that you learn to face your enemy. Leonardo urges Arnie to take all that he's learned and fight the bullies. But you make faces my enemy twice, they beat shit out of me both times. Arnie complains that he's already been beaten up twice, but Leo prods him into trying. I did. Well try it again, but use everything you've learned. Leo pushes toward the bullies. So? You think he learned everything? Asked Mikey. I hope, I mean you taught him basic self-defense, right Mikey? Leo asked Mikey how to kick and punch, Leo pointed to himself, I cover inner strength. I didn't teach him any fighting skills. Said Mikey, I thought Raph was gonna do that. I didn't, Donnie did you? Oh shell. They looked at Arnie, he got beat up again. Okay, we're gonna start over, but this time with the real basics. Said Leo. Right. 
or, as Master Splinter would say a foundation of a house, must start strong, as Mikey does Master Splinter impression, a shadow looming above him he shrieks. As the three other turtles turn to see the shadow looming over them, they find their furious sensei in front of them. Master Splinter. Naruto was on the rooftop watching his brother get scolded and ordered to go home. When Master Splinter turns his head to look at the rooftop, Naruto disappears. Naruto Master Splinter thought. Arnie walking alone down the sidewalk. I just told that kid with the red hat, the training isn't working. He approaches his apartment building, he sees his nerdy friend Stevie, getting bullied by the same group of thugs that have been beating him. Oh, are you gonna cry, hey look he's gonna cry. The leader taunted his friend. Hey. Give it back. The boy named Stevie tries to get his book back. Stevie, when Arnie saw his friend get bullied, he got enraged. Protect your precious people. Oh what you gonna do about it? Said the leader until he cried when he looked at the source. He saw Arnie charging at him with rage in his eyes. Arnie gives him hard punch to the face knocking over to the ground. The other two bullies got angry and charged at him. When one of the bullies swung his hockey stick, Arnie ducked under. Making the bullies hit his fellow bully, and then Arnie grabbed the bully's hockey stick, then elbowed him to the gut follow up with a backhanded punch to the face knocking him down. When Arnie looks at the fallen bully, the leader sneaks from behind trying to hit him with a hockey stick. But when the leader was about to hit Arnie, Arnie saw it, so he blocked it with the hockey stick from the bully he knocked over. The leader keeps on hitting him, but Arnie always blocks it. Until Arnie disarmed him and hit his feet, making the bully leader off balance. When the other bullies saw their leader fall down, they got scared so they ran away like chickens. When the leader saw Arnie's angry face, he ran away too, running with his tail between his legs. That's right. You better run, you bullies better watch it cause Arnold Casey Jones let any of you push nobody around no more. Casey declared to his bullies. Gor gor gangala gangala. Casey cries his battle cry. Wow, Stevie is impressed with his friend's newfound fighting skills, Casey gives his book to him. Come on Stevie I walk you home, the two buddies walk off, finally feeling confident and safe. At the rooftop, Naruto saw everything. He chuckles when the kid faces his bullies, only thing to do is get grocery again. Naruto? Naruto's eyes widen, he hears something familiar. Kurama. Five years have passed, as a 15-year-old Naruto was attending his garden well, it's both his and Master Splinter Garden that grows inside the lair with an artificial heat source built by Donatello, they're the only two who like gardening. His appearance changed a bit, his hair had grown a little longer, almost reaching the back of his shoulder, and had two side bangs on each side of his face. Almost the perfect image of Minato, his father, his height was still the same when he was still in the elemental nations of being 166 cm, still slightly taller than his brother. Five years have passed since Naruto discovered that Kurama is still inside of him, but not what he had expected. This Kurama is not the Kurama he knew. This Kurama is the other half of Kurama, the yin half, the one inside his father before being transferred onto him. When all of the tailed beasts had gone inside into Naruto, both Kurama halves didn't merge into one, it's decided they will merge back into one after the war. But they never got the chance because Kagaya hurled Naruto into a different world while his chakra was sucked into Kagaya. Naruto was a bit saddened that this is not the Kurama he grew to know, but his acceptance towards this Kurama was nonetheless. Naruto and Yin Kurama discussed how his chakra could be recovered. Yin Kurama answered yes, but it will take a decade or two to fully recover his lost chakra, and also Yin Kurama also needs to sleep a couple more years. He also needed to recover his lack of chakra in him, Yin Kurama suggested Naruto to learn the eight inner gates, while his chakra recovered. Sure, that is a little overkill, but it won't hurt to learn it, you could never be unprepared. Yin Kurama gave Naruto a warning, once he got his proper chakra level back. He would have to relearn chakra control again, Naruto groaned in response. Naruto sighed in defeat, when his chakra returned to normal he had to relearn everything. Yin Kurama had gone deep into Naruto's subconscious to review Naruto's life, Yin Kurama now understood why Yin Kurama saw Naruto with great respect. He saw the hardship, the struggle, and the bond that Naruto forged in his life. Yin Kurama gave Naruto the respect that the Yang Kurama had given him, saying their goodbye. Yin Kurama soon went back to sleep, leaving Naruto to train even harder. For the past five years, Naruto tried to learn the eight inner gates. Unfortunately, he learned to open only two gates. Naruto gave Rock Lee great respect for learning five gates in only two years. Without anyone to teach him how to properly open the gates, he'd have to rely on his own experience and memories on fighting Lee, Guy or any eight gates user. Right now he's taking a break from training to attend to his flowers and some vegetables. There you go guys, wearing his gardener's clothes, Naruto watering his plants with a water pot. 
He greatly cares for his garden if anyone messes his garden, especially Michelangelo Hell will pay if anyone messes his garden. After watering his plants he put down his water pot on shelves of other garden tools. As Naruto was about to leave to do something else, he stumbled upon an old robot toy on a box of old stuff that his brother owns, no doubt from Mikey. He picked up the toy and remembered something about the past, he had a headache racing through his head. Remembering that crazy week involving a toy robot that his brothers fought over. He remembered it like it was yesterday. Long flashback. Ten years ago. The five-year-old Naruto was playing tag with his four-years-old brothers within safe distance from the lair. The five brothers played for hours until it was time to go home. When the orange ray of the sunset shined through the sidewalk sower vent signaling a time to go home. It seems it's time we get back, Naruto announced, the turtles groaning. Come on guys, the four master splinter has a fit. Okay, the turtles wince, but agree. As they were walking back to the lair, Leo saw something laying on the sower floor. Hey, check it out. What was lying on the sower water floor was a toy robot, Naruto thought it looked a little advanced. But what does he know, almost everything in this world is more advanced than his previous one was. Cool, a toy. Mikey picks up the robot toy, then tosses it to Naruto. Naruto caught it, Naruto chuckled, as he caught it, then threw it to Leo. Leo threw to Raph next, go long. Raph catch it, nice catch. Humming get it, Raph throws it to Donnie then to Mikey. Suddenly they hear something coming from the toy, saying something that a toddler wouldn't understand. Whoa, hear that, my new toy talk. Said Mikey then the robot toy spoke something again that the toddler didn't understand, but only Naruto and Donatello understood a bit of what it was saying. Activating inner monologue subroutine, then a digital sound that is heard from the toy, until Mikey shakes it. Do it again, do it again. I don't hear anything. Said Mikey with a disappointing tone. Who's care, let's take it home, said Raph. Yeah. The boys exclaimed, the boys ran towards their home. Come on. Lastly, there is a rotten shell. As they arrived back home, Mikey immediately rushed to his toy car and put the toy robot on his toy race car. Check out my demolition derby driver bros, Mikey drives his toy car to the wall. The car crash lets the toy robot launch out of the car then picked up by Donnie, using pieces of string, he tied it to his toy rocket. Derby driver? No way Mikey, we are using this toy for scientific purposes. He's my atmospheric research probe, Donatello launches his rocket in the air making swirling around the air. Then Naruto catches it, no we are making him into a puppet that has a hidden weapon in him, kid friendly of course. Naruto never had a toy before. The only thing that was close to the toy in his previous childhood was his wallet frog Gamachan. As Naruto held it up in his hand, Raph snatched it from him. No mind, find your own toy. No fair Raph, I want to play with him. Leo tries to snatch the toy from Raph until they let it go, and it is caught by Master Splinter. Whose toy is this? Asked Splinter. Mine. The boys exclaimed together and didn't know why Naruto wanted it. Maybe it is the fulfillment that he has his very first toy or is it his child urge tendencies in him. I see my sons, your relationship to each other is more important than yours relationship to things. The boys hung their heads down in shame, especially Naruto. He was supposed to be the big brother to guide his brother to the right path, he was immature on this. Well, he's always immature, but not Mikey's immature. Sure he's in a child body, but his mind is beyond years. Until you learn that and learn to share, this toy is off limits. Splinter tossed the toy in a blue box, you must not allow possessions to possess you, for that leads to obsession. Splinter turns his head and faces the boys, do you understand? Yes sensei, the boys said it together. Good, Splinter stood up and walked towards the boys, and now young ninja it's bedtime. Oh, the boys wince, they walk to their bed unknowingly the toy robot closes the blue box. All the boys went to sleep except one. As Mikey waited for his brothers to fall asleep. He sneaked towards the blue box and opened it, he picked up the toy. When Mikey thinks he is in the clear, his brothers stand behind him, except for Naruto who's still sleeping with an angry expression. Nice try Mikey, but you heard Master Splinter. Leo snatched at Mikey, you can't play with my toy until you learn to share. You're a toy. The three other turtles exclaimed. Good thing I already learned that lesson. Leo walks away with the robot toy in hand, later bros. No way he's mine, I found him. Mikey follows Leo with Donnie. And I admire his advanced robotics, so give me. As Donatello chases Leo, Raph gets frustrated and shoves his brother to the lair room, making the both of them fall over. Like I said he's mine. You want to fight for him, huh? Now Mikey got angry, you got it bro. Mikey soon tackled Raph, making him drop the robot toy. Unknown to them Donatello sneaked away with the toy, Leo saw this he shoved him to the wall, making Donnie toss the toy to another wall, only to bounce out the sewer. 
Ops, that is the only thing Leo says. At the surface, the robot toy suddenly stood up and started to run. Free at last, those turtles are insane, as the robot toy attempts to make his getaway only to be hit by a car. The dark blue car stops when the car's door opens. It reveals a slightly overweight old man wearing a purple suit. As the old man stepped out of the car, his eyes widened. Is it? No, it can't be, can it? The old man gasps, but it is. The old man picked up the toy. It's you at last, you're mine, my own, my cherished. The old man laughs as he walks to his car, then a sewer cap opens revealing the turtles. Hey, that geezer stole my toy. Said Mikey. You mean my toy, said Raph. The turtles rushes toward the running car and hop on the back of it. Few moments earlier, Naruto slept soundly until Rakes woke him up. As he opened his eyes he saw his brothers were not in bed. The eyes. Naruto calls out to his brothers, but no response. He tried again, Mikey. Still no response. And again, Donnie Leo Raph was about to ask Master Splinter, until he heard noises outside the lair, he rushed toward it. He saw his brothers run toward the surface, he ran after them, and forgot to inform Master Splinter. Unknown to him, Master Splinter also woke up from the noise seeing his eldest son ran after his brothers, he soon followed. As Naruto climbed out the sewer, he saw his brothers hitch a ride on the back of the car. Naruto tried to catch up to the car, but he couldn't at his current level. Man, I wish my chakra is back. Naruto muttered when Naruto tried to find a way to catch up. Before he lost them, when a shine of light hit him. He saw a car was about to run past him, Naruto had to think fast, he ran towards the nearest trash can he found a cable wire, a skateboard, and some bendable metal. He picks them up, as he catches up to the moving car, he makes ship hook attached with the cable wire. As the car starts to accelerate, he tosses the cable wire. The makeship hook attaches itself around the rear bumper of the car, Naruto holds the end of the rope as he rides his skateboard, now his street surfing. Lucky him the car he is riding is driving the same direction as the dark blue car is with his brothers. When he saw the dark blue park in front of a building, he let go of the rope from the car he was riding. As he slows down he stops at the front building. He looked at the building, it had two bear's soldiers on each side of the building, and two gift warps next to the bear's soldiers, then two candy canes next to the gift wrap, and at the center it had a big smiling head, as clock, the name of the place is Wendell's World. Naruto walked toward the front door only for him to be in awe, there were so many toys. He squealed in joy, until he realized what he was doing. He punches himself, he scowls, and mutters, stupid child urges. At the basement of the building, a room that looked like a mad scientist laboratory, at the center of the room, the toy robot is laying on a metal table. The toy robot woke up and tried to get up, but couldn't. I seem to have short-circuited, initiating self-diagnostic and repair functions. This may take a while, and until then, I'm helpless. Welcome to Wendell's World, New York's flagship peddler of kitty toys. The old man steps out of the shadow and laughs, claptrap kitty toys compared to you. I'm Wendell, the old man introduced himself, and you my cherished are in my secret workshops. Yes, yours in fine shape. Wendell picks the toy up and marvels at its beauty, bruised but still quite lovely, especially considering that you must have been made what? 80 years ago. At least, that's what I saw. Do I remember it like it was yesterday, Wendell remembers that day, he first saw the toy robot's laser destroy his toy soldier 80 years ago. I was just a boy back then, but certainly left an impression. You, the most magnificent toy ever built. As you can see, I have a hard time thinking about letting you go. The destroyed soldier is in a glass casing, now I have you in my hands, time to find out what makes you tick. Wendell pushed the button, the buzz saw blade started to buzz. No. I'm doomed. The robot toy spoke mentally. Back upstairs, Naruto looks around to find his brothers. When he saw them at last, they had gone down to a secret passage. As Naruto was about to follow them, the turtles got out the secret passage with killer toy robots chasing them. One of the killer toy robots with whip as an arm grabs Mikey's legs and drops the toy robot to the floor, the other turtles grab and pull him away from the killer toy. Naruto's big brother instinct went alert, he quickly grabbed a toy baseball bat on the toy shelf. When the killer toy is about to whip the turtles, Naruto appears in front of them. Naruto? The turtles exclaimed. Naruto hit the robot's arm whip away from them and then he hit it again to let go of Mikey. Making the other turtles stumble back, when they stood up again the killer robot attacked them again. I don't know what is going on. Naruto went to the defense stance, but we talk about it later, after we destroy this robot's rejects. Right. The turtles agree. They charged at the killer toy, and Naruto swung his bat at the toy. Unfortunately some of the robots jump on his back. Naruto dropped his bat, tries to get the toys off his back. 
Naruto and the Turtles got outnumbered, this is pathetic they got beating on toy robots. Hey they're 4 to 5 years old, especially for Naruto, as his physically 5 year old body doesn't do what he wants yet, but his thought this is pathetic, it greatly blows his pride. When this is over, he will surely train harder. Suddenly different toys attack the robot toys and destroy them. Confused about what happened, Mikey made a comment about it. Are we really lucky or is this store haunted? Who cares, now we can get otters here. Said Donnie. What? The turtles gasped turned around, they saw Wendell stand behind them. Leaving so soon the fun just getting started. Wendell laughs as a huge robot toy walks towards them. Destroy, destroy, destroy. The giant robot toy is ready to launch its laser at them. Playtime is over, said Wendell. Destroy, destroy. The giant robot attacks the boys with its laser on the ground, making them hit the ground. I thought toy robots were supposed to be fun, Raph wins as the giant robot toy about to attack them again. Master Splinter soon appears behind Wendell. Master Splinter. The boys cheer. Hooray. Naruto's eyebrow raised, he swore he heard a voice. You, a talking rat. Wendell spoke in a disgusting tone and shook his head, this city attracts all kinds. Release my sons at once, Splinter demanded. How my Ultrabot blasts you bits instead, the Ultrabot launches its weapon on Splinter, Splinter rushes towards the robot toy and dodge all its attacks. Splinter jumped into the air and kicked the robot's head making it shut down. But when it was about to shut down, it started again. Then attack Master Splinter once more. When Ultrabot was about to attack Master Splinter, Naruto saw the little robot toy jump on the back of the giant robot toy. The little robot toy opened a casing where the batteries are. He took off the battery making the Ultrabot shut down. What? What happened? Why does it stop? Wendell shudder, he saw the battery was on the ground. Master Splinter picked it up and, as he was about to comment, Naruto beat to the punch. Naruto chuckles, runs out of battery. Master Splinter chuckles, he ruffles Naruto's hair making smiles at him. No, Wendell started to kick the Ultrabot. As Splinter walks towards his other sons, they run toward him and embrace him. Master Splinter. Father. It's good to see you, my sons. Splinter smiles, but turn into disappointment expressions. If I haven't tracked Naruto to this store, who forgot to inform me? Naruto rub his head nervously. I may not see you again. And what worse you reveal yourselves to the surface world, the boy's head hung down in shame. And force me to do it as well. We're sorry sensei, Naruto apologized on behalf of his brothers. I should have stopped them, I failed, as a big brother. When Splinter was about to speak, Leo spoke first. No. Master Splinter, we're the one to blame. The man stole my toy, making us go after our toy. Yeah, and he is crazy in love with it or something. Mikey added to it. Splinter scoffs, and willing to do anything to possess it, I see. For possesses lead to obsession, and obsession knows no bounds. Splinter stood up, I hope you learned a valuable lesson my sons. Yes sensei. Where's the special toy now? Asked Master Splinter. Hey, here it is. We thought we lost it from all the fighting. Donnie picks it up. Donnie stared at it for a moment, then spoke, you know, I don't want it anymore. Yeah, me too. Leo added. The boys turn to Wendell who's sitting on the floor in depression. Donnie walks to him and offers him the toy robot, here you have it. What? Again Naruto heard the voice coming from the toy robot, it is not what a normal toy would say. You're giving it to me, just like that. Wendell questions this. My relationship with my brothers is more important than my relationship with this thing. Stated Donnie, both Naruto and Splinter smile at this. You know I first saw this toy when I was about your age, he it was magnificent and couldn't bear to live without it. If you can let it go, I can too. Wendell smiled. It is kinda ugly looking. Mikey commented. And you smell. Naruto now knows this is not a normal toy, toys never speak like that. Why do you know? It can talk. Yeah. And it's mean. Let's chuck it. Mikey walks toward the trash can, while Wendell holds the trash can bin, Mikey throws it in the trash. I finally free, Wendell sighs in relief, finally free. And don't you worry, I'm an expert keeping things to myself. I wouldn't tell anyone about you or what happened tonight. Everybody was walking out of the store, but only Naruto was behind. As Naruto walks toward the trash can bin, a flash of light appears. Naruto shields his eyes, when open his eyes the trash can bin disappears. Naruto was confused about what happened, he thought to himself forget everything that happened here. He walked out the store while his family was waiting outside, and Naruto smiled and ran towards them. Then flashback. Remembering everything about that night, Naruto got a headache. He shook his head and forgot that night again. Naruto walks out of the room. 
Weeks pass, Naruto and his brothers are playing a video game on an old arcade machine. The game is called Mortal Kombat, it is an old gen of the game. That was found by Leo and Raph, it was a rundown old arcade machine with a lot of faulty wiring, some broken parts, and a lot of dead animals inside of it while living there. Until Donatello fixed it up, he was working at it for months. Now it was all fixed up, they played for hours. Now for the final battle, Naruto vs Michelangelo. Scorpion vs Sub-Zero. Fight. They have been playing intensely, while their brothers cheer them on. Well, only to Naruto. Though Naruto. You almost beat him, Leo cheers. Pick his smelling shell ass. Raph cheers loudly and insults Mikey. Hey. Mikey scowled as he went back to the game. Naruto's HP is only 20% while Mikey has 50% left. Sub-Zero sends a blast of ice directly towards Scorpion to temporarily freeze him in place for a free hit. Sub-Zero gives out a series of combos after Scorpion breaks his ice prison his turn to attack. Scorpion teleported behind Sub-Zero, connects with a hellfire punch, then hit him with a flaming uppercut. Sub-Zero hit the ground then stood up again. He slides across the floor, knocking the opponent off their feet, leaving a trail of ice behind. Scorpion stood up only to Sub-Zero to grab him and freeze him, then Sub-Zero delivered a massive forward punch to the ribs. Naruto only has 5% life, Mikey only 15%. But Mikey was about to make a fatality move. Naruto quickly presses the button for Scorpion to use his famous move. Scorpion sends out a rope with a tipped kunai at the end, it impales itself into the victim's chest, allowing Scorpion to pull him towards him for a free hit, as well as causing a small bit of damage. Dead over here. Scorpion unleashes a series of combos, Mikey only has 5% life left. Naruto went into fatality move, Scorpion tossed his kunai spear at Sub-Zero's head. As the kunai is lodged in it, Scorpion begins to slightly pull on the rope a few times, then pulls one last violent tug that causes Sub-Zero head to break off. The game shouted. Fatality. Scorpion wins. Naruto and the other three turtles cheer for victory, while Mikey feels miserable with the nine tears running down his face. The victory was interrupted with Naruto's worried face. Where is it? Where is it? Naruto ferociously searches for something, as he searches under him his brother's eyes brow raise if they eyes brow. Naruto? What are you looking for? Asked Ani. My necklace, of course. Naruto keeps searching, the turtles glance at each other. The necklace you wear? Asked Leo. But you never take off. Add Donny. Ever? Add Mikey useless outburst. What's so special about that necklace anyway? Raph scoff. Naruto glares at him. It is a very special Raph. It is a sign of a promise from years ago. What promise? Asked Leo. Naruto looks away, well, it's a promise from a girl. What? The turtles exclaimed. You never told us about this Raph got a bit angry that his brother never told him about it. When will this happen? Asked Donnie. Yeah, when? Asked Mikey. Well, it was years ago. Naruto rubs his head nervously, I'm not sure you guys remember it. So how many years ago was it? Asked Leo. Well, it started when Naruto began his story. Long flashback. Naruto Pav. 11 years ago. It has been 13 years, I was found by Master Splinter. He told me, he found me somewhere in the sower. He gathered supplies until he found me and brought me home, he raised me, and you guys of course. Two years pass, I grew up with you guys. When Splinter said we're going on a trip, I asked why. He told me, is something personal. At first I was suspicious until I saw him carry a vase, I don't know why Master Splinter carried such a heavy vase. We were supposed to be stealthy, why carry such a heavy object? Shouldn't we carry light? I asked him why we carry a vase. What was in it? The answered memories. I raised my brow, I thought to myself. Is it something to do about his past? When Master Splinter was gone I looked inside the vase. Interruption by Mikey. What is it? Asked Mikey innocently. I was about to until you interrupted me, Naruto glares at Mikey. So, what's in it? The other turtle's face was palmed. Ashes, Naruto answers blankly. Ashes? The turtles questioned. Yes ashes, it turns out it is the ashes of a dear friend of Master Splinter. Naruto answers, he didn't tell me who his friend was, he just told me he was family. But I soon learned it was Master Splinter dead sensei. His sensei? The turtles exclaimed in surprise, Naruto nodded. His name was Hamada Yashi, the man who was Sensei's owner when he was still a normal rat. The turtle's eyes widened, so, he's like our grandpa or something? Asked Mikey. More or less, but yeah he's our grandpa. Naruto shrugged. I think we're off topic here, I thought this is about how Naruto met this girl. Leo stated. You're right, Leo. Anyway where am I? Naruto snapped his finger, oh yes. Return to flashback. 
Anyway, in the morning we stowed away on a ship that headed to Japan. Never been to Japan before, but I heard people are like me, except for the blonde hair and blue eyes. After we arrived at the dock when we exited the ship, we started to find the Ancient One. Interrupted by Mikey again. Ancient One? Is he some kind of warrior? Asked Mikey excitedly, maybe he teaches us how to carry power within us. Like, like, like how to fuse two energies into one, making us walk on walls, walk on water or control the elements. Naruto stared at Mikey with a blank expression and a twitchy eye. How the hell did he guess chakra right away, let alone how it can be used? Raph whacked Mikey back of the head, Mikey groaned. Naruto shook his head, anyway. Return to the story. As we tried to find the Ancient One, I got distracted by all the tall buildings all around. Next thing I knew, I was lost. Somewhere in the slum of the city, as I was trying to find you guys. I saw a girl beaten up by two drunken men. The girl was one or two years older than me, she had black raven hair, pale skin, and a skinny frame. You can't blame her, she looks like she hasn't eaten in days. Tato. An Ottawa Gakum Dismte Sarit Irupanku. Hey. You punk are supposed at school. Asked the man in a drunken state. Un, yeah, the other man agreed, Watashi wa anada gaamu, ananoko wa basanak to amamasu ka. I think the girl must be punished, do you think? The drunken man number one agreed. Then they did something to make my blood boil, they started to beat the little girl. She crouched down, as they kicked her. I quickly rushed towards them then I leaped, and I flying kicked one of the man's face. Dynamiku enter plus, dynamic entry. Good thing I still know how to speak Japanese. Interrupted this time by Leo. Do you speak Japanese at that age? Questioned Leo. Uh, I learned it from Master Splinter. Naruto trying to cover his mistake, Leo seems a bit suspicious of Naruto's behavior, but he drops it. Naruto continues his story. Return you know where. As I knocked out one of the men, his friend was angry and unleashed to cry and charged at me. I quickly moved slightly to the left, when the man missed me, and almost passed me I karate chopped his neck, and he got knocked out cold. After that, I walked up to the girl who was shivering a bit in fear. I approach her carefully without scaring her away. Then, sorwa dejmbu, waruhito wa imanakunadairu. Hey, it's okay, the bad men are gone now. I try to calm her down. As she opened her eyes, I saw sorrow and fear in her green eyes, I gently wiped her tears away. I pulled out my hand, and she got up, as she stood we heard a growl. I look around where the sound came from, when I turn my attention to her. She looked away, and blushed then another growl sound again, it was her stomach. When I process what happened, I immediately chuckle. Erikaga uid iru im naimieru, seems someone is hungry, Naruto smiled, and the girl nodded. Guru come, I grab her arm, and drag her out of the alleyway, lucky for us we found a ramen stand. As I use my cute little kid charm on the owner as stand, he caves in and gives us two free Mizo ramen bowls. I started to eat, but the girl simply stared at her food and tears ran down her cheeks. Oh anata wan, watashi wa anata no tame no machigata ramen o arabu nadesu ka. Hey you okay, did I pick the wrong ramen for you? I was worried that I would upset her. But shook in reply, she snapped her chalk stick and started to eat the ramen faster than I ever could. When she turns to look at me she gives a beautiful smile. Interrupted by Naruto's brother snickering at him. Shut up. Naruto looks away and blushes. His brother chuckles while Raph and Mikey make kissing noises, Naruto glares at them and returns to his story. You know what is already. I smiled at her back after we had our fill. I promised the ramen stand owner I would pay him someday, but the old man declined it. He smiled at both of us, he gave me a thumbs up, making me confused. By the time we were out of sight of the ramen stand, I saw Master Splinter standing in the shadows with a stern look. I sigh and turn to the girl, who keeps smiling at me. Batashi wa soro ga ima tame no o, I think it's time for me to go now, the girl's smile turned frowning and started to tear up, she muttered something I couldn't hear. Nani no. What did you say? She muttered again, but a little louder, Watashi wa futatabi ni otaru ka. Will I see you again? She looked at me with her sad eyes. I smile at her, Yakisoku, promise. Yakisoku? Promise? The girl shyly asks. Mach iron, Naruto Uzumaki wa Yakisoku o Yuburu Koto wa Arimasen. Sorrow Shinji Damasu. Of course, Naruto Uzumaki never breaks a promise. Believe it. I give her a good guy pose, minus the sparkling teeth, copyright patented, she giggles. I looked around, I saw a nearby garbage bin, and I opened the lead lid. I found a pendant that has a yin yang symbol. I rushed back towards her, Koko Nai. Here. I split the symbol yin for her, yang for me. I wrapped the yin pendant around her neck. 
Bor Nayori, Konoshin Bor Wa, Nayo and Naishimasu. With this, this symbol will guide us to each other someday. I give out a huge smile, the girl blushes with a simple nod, and also gives out a smile. I saw Master Splinter waiting for me, so I said my goodbye to her. Sate, sayonara, well, goodbye. I waved my hand, as I walked away I saw her holding the pendant tightly, while the other hand waved goodbye to me, as I saw her tear running down her cheeks. It saddened me, but I keep my promise no matter what, we will find each other someday. Then flashback. Then after that everything is a blur, Naruto finishes his story, the turtle's eyes brow raise at the last part. What do you mean after that everything is a blur? Asked Leo. That what I mean, after meeting back with Master Splinter I got nothing, but blur. Naruto thought for a moment, the only thing I remember is meeting a fat ass old man who fart a lot, four floating people, and some kind of skeleton ghost thing. Skeleton ghost? Asked Ani, Naruto shrugged. Hey. Naruto I found your pendant, Raf called out, it was under Mikey big fat ass. Oh yeah, you big fat ass head, Mikey growls at Raf, who's snickering at him. Naruto chuckle, thanks Raf, I thought I would never have it again. Naruto put the pendant around his neck. Hey something is bothering me, Donnie wonders. Oh what about Donnie? Asked Leo. If someday Naruto meets this girl, Donnie looks at Naruto. How will I know her name? Naruto stares at him for a bit, then his eyes widen. Oh my god. You're right I didn't ask her name. Naruto shouted. Suddenly pulling his hair in frustration. Kami, he was truly an idiot. His brother sigh. Few days later. Naruto walked into the Donatella workshop, where all his experiments happened, and an explosion blasted Naruto's face. Speaking of the explosion, Naruto opened the door of Donnie's workshop. An explosion exploded on his face. Naruto coughs, as he is covered in smog, Donnie comes out coughing from the smoke. Oh hey Naruto, what's up? Donnie smiles sheepishly. Well nothing except explosions on my face again, Naruto deadpan Donnie. Yeah sorry about that, Donnie chuckled nervously. Anyway, I want you to build me something. Naruto hands over a paper to Donnie. Donnie stares for a while slowly, his eyes widened, he looks at Naruto, as he points at the paper. Naruto? Is this before Donnie finishes Naruto interrupted him. Yes, it is. Naruto nodded, can you build it? Donnie grinned widely, of course I can. Good. New York's one of the busiest cities in the world, and a city that never sleeps with tall buildings and skyscrapers shining through the moonlit sky. Underneath the city, deep into the sower, where our five ninja heroes live. You can see five ninja students face off to their master teaching them the way of the ninja. Remember to be a true ninja you must become one with the shadows. Darkness gives ninja power, while light reveals the ninja presence. Said Master Splinter, as he held his walking cane with a lighted candle at the tip of his cane. Now try to extinguish this flame without revealing yourselves. As he flipped the candle with his walking cane without burning out the flame, and caught it with his paw. The shadow figure rushes towards him trying to get the candle from Master Splinter grasp, but only to miss, and slip to the wall of the room. Do noisy, Donatello. Said Master Splinter with a smug smile. Then another shadow figure rushes to Master Splinter also trying to get the candle from him, but only to be tripped by Splinter and collide with Donatello. Do clumsy Michelangelo. Both Donnie and Mikey groan. Another shadow figure tries to tackle Master Splinter from behind. But he sensed it coming, he ducked underneath only for a shadow figure to jump over him. But the shadow figure landed gracefully, this time Master Splinter got a little serious with this shadow figure, this one is a little better than the other two, he could be the one who got the candle not. Without patience the shadow figure rushes again, patiently Master Splinter waits for the shadow figure to come closer to him, as he sits down using his cane to trip the shadow figure towards the other two who fail. Poor choice Raphael. Master Splinter stood up, unaware someone was above him hidden within the shadow, and another one hid within the shadow top corner of the wall. The shadow figure from the top corner of the wall, launches an odd shaped trench knife with a metal chain attached to it, launching from his wrist to distract the rat. The one from above took this opportunity to jump out his hiding spot, and horizontally slashed the candle in two from Master Splinter's paw, only landed on his blade, leaving the flame still on, he blew the flame out. The session was over, Master Splinter soon turned on the lights revealing his students, and over the years they changed. Donatello or Donnie or the brain, the second tallest and smartest of the brothers, and little bit scrawny of the four, his intelligence increased over the years his IQ is over 600, it true. He always liked building gadgets in his lab that tend to explode on Naruto's face when he visits his lab. His skin is brownish green or tea green, his eyes are brownish red, he wears a purple bandana, and his weapon of choice is a bow staff, which can transform into Najinata by pressing a switch somewhere on his staff. I feel like I need to reintroduce them with a little more detail. 
Michelangelo or Mikey or just the Mikey, the youngest, goofiest, and slightly shorter than his brothers, he's still immature. He loves pizza, comics, cooking, pranks like Naruto, and annoys Raph to an extent. His skin is forest green, his eyes are baby blues like Naruto, he wears an orange bandana, and his weapon of choice is an Nchaku, which can transform into Kusurigama that have hidden blades within the Nchaku. Next is Raphael or Raffer the rebel, the toughest and the hot-headed of the brothers, need anger management and overprotecting to his brothers, secretly. He loves napping, beating someone up, his pet turtle named Spike who he found two years ago, oh the irony, and who's also watching them training at the corner of the room and challenges Leo and Naruto. Is slightly bulkier of the five brothers on his shell, a lightning bolt shaped crack missing chunk on the right corner of his plastron, he probably got it when he was a baby turtle as it was there during his mutation. His skin is dark green, his eyes are green, he wears a red bandana, and his weapon of choice is a sigh. Next is Leonardo or Leo, the leader and second most skilled of the brothers, sometimes doubtful of leadership skill. He loves training, sometimes watching a TV show called Space Heroes and spending time with his father master Splinter. His skin is asparagus green, his eyes are sapphire blue, he wore a blue bandana that symbolizes a leader and his weapon of choice is the katana. Last, and not the least is Naruto Uzumaki or Naruto or the fox, the wisest and skillets of the brothers. He loves pranks, ramen, pizza, gardening, training, and his family. Naruto's blonde hair gone little longer he have slightly short ponytail, his whiskers still visible, his eyes are cerulean, he wore a white fox mask, orange sleeveless hoodie with upside down black tee on front of his hoodie, black cargo pants, black and orange sneaker. His have arm guards each of his arms while underneath that are bandage wrap around his arms with a kunai launcher that was invented by Donatello within the bandage and weapon of choice or weapons are trench knives that look like Asuma's chakra blades that attach with a metal chain from his kunai launcher like Scorpion from Mortal Kombat and a short sword strap around his back. Naruto was supposed to be the leader of the group but he told Master Splinter that Leo should be a better leader than him. The teamwork Leonardo and Naruto said Master Splinter with smiles on his face towards his son and all his sons. Teacher's pet. Said Raphael with a scowl on his face as he held the bottom half of the candle that Leonardo slashed earlier. Ninjas drop out, Leo taunted. Ooh oh. Naruto, Mikey and Donnie said it together while Raph smashed the candle. Both Leo and Raph glared at each other, Master Splinter intervened using his cane. My son, he sighs and puts his hand to his face. My sons, if you want to become a true ninja, you must work harder. The young ninja then sat kneeling in front of their master. Your path in life will not be an easy one, while the rat was giving his lecture, Mikey decided to focus on the more interesting matter like a fly that was buzzing in front of him. The outside world will not be a friendly place for you. You four are different in ways that the surface dwellers will never understand. To survive, you must use these skills that I teach you. Naruto raised his hand. A sensei, I'm not really all that different from the surface dwellers. Sorry about that Naruto. Sometimes my mind plays tricks on me whenever I overteach. Said a sheepish Splinter. That's why he does all the shopping. Said Donnie. Splinter then picked up from there, ninjutsu powers of stealth and secrecy. You must become cage shadow warriors. Mikey then decided to smash the fly. Master Splinter shot a stern look at Michelangelo, who chuckled nervously. Then all of a sudden there was a loud rumbling. It echoed all over the lair. WH what is that noise? Asked Splinter. Whoa, an earthquake exclaimed Mikey. In New York. Possible, Donatello wondered. But Naruto is not likely finished Naruto. All four turtles had their weapons at the ready, while Naruto put up his fists in a defensive position. Soon there was a crash, and small robots the size of an average dog with huge jaws and sharp jagged teeth came out of the wall. What are those things? Asked Leonardo. The New York City cockroaches said Mikey hesitantly. Well whatever those things are, said Raph. They picked the wrong lair to trash, said Naruto. All five attacked, smashing one robot after another. Splinter also held his own ground as he destroyed each and every robot that came his way. But unfortunately, he was being backed into a wall. Leo noticed Splinter's situation and declared, come on guys, we have to help Master Splinter. What the others didn't notice was that some of the robots were biting down onto the support beams that held the underground lair in place. Raph saw his pet turtle was caught in the crossfire, he tried to grab him, but the ceiling started to fall on top of him. Naruto saw what was going on, he quickly saved Raphael from the falling ceiling, while Master Splinter also saw the ceiling crashing down and quickly grabbed Spike to safety. They all gasped as the falling ceiling separated the five ninja warriors from their master, and Raph yelled, oh no, Master Splinter. Naruto tried pulling apart at the rock while yelling, no. Few moments later. 
Mikey inspected the robots. What shell are these things? He wondered aloud. Whatever they were, said Raph they're junk now. Then Leo said, guys focus, we have to find Master Splinter. Hey Master Splinter, can you hear me? Donatello, can you? Already on it, said Don I'm calling him on the shell cell, I hope. On the other side, Splinter rose from his unconsciousness with spike in hand when he heard ringing going on in his monk's robe, he pulled out a shell-like cell phone. Which button do you press to answer this thing again? He wondered aloud. Leo took the phone and tried to communicate with Splinter. Which button do you press to answer this thing again? Hello? Master Splinter, are you alright? Hello? Master Splinter? Stupid device. You don't have to press any buttons, you already answered it. Naruto chuckles despite the situation they were in. Leonardo whatever those mechanical menaces are they managed to eat through the support structure of our home. We must leave right away. Meet me at the old drainage junction in South Point. Oh, and Spike is okay Raphael, Raph sighs in relief. Don pulled out a map and said, if we take the South Conduit, it'll intersect the old drainage tunnel. Naruto then declared, we'll meet you there, Sensei. What did he say? What did he say? Did he mention me? Said Mikey his brothers give him a deadpan expression except Raph who has an annoyed expression he shoved Mikey away. Ow, Mikey winces. Minutes later, Mikey then took one last look around the now destroyed lair and said with a pseudo sad voice, goodbye grungy payphone, goodbye dented manhole cover, and goodbye home sweet home. And hello reality, now come on, said Naruto. As they were leaving, Donatello remarked, you know, I'm surprised that this ceiling hasn't collapsed yet. Then they ran into exactly that. Were you saying, said Naruto. Well we can't go forward, and we can't go back, said Raph. Then there's only one direction left, said Naruto is going up. Going up to the surface I'm not sure Naruto, said Leonardo with a hesitant tone. Come on Mr. Leader, remarked Raph, we have no other way to go, so I suggest I lead us up. Alright, said Leonardo we'll go up, but only to go down another manhole. No fooling around, remember what Sensei said. La, 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 said Michelangelo let's just go up. We heard it a thousand times Leo, just follow my lead, said Raph. They went in a single file line. Raph, Leo, Mikey, Naruto, and Don. Raph pushed the manhole up and immediately leapt out. Leo was a bit more cautious, but Mikey said, come on Leo move it. I don't want to stare at your butt any longer than I have to. Oh like yours is any better Mikey. Shouted Naruto. Eyes, shush, said Leo, as a moved scouter approached. They immediately hide into the manhole except Raph he hides into the shadow, as the scouter passes by, Raph immediately leapt to a light post, then spotted a manhole cover not too far away. But, as soon as he was almost there, an armored truck parked right above it. Just great, muttered Raph, as the people in the truck left, the all turtle luck work in true to form. He then kicked the truck on its side. Way to be stealthy Raph, said Leo. Yeah, exclaimed both Naruto and Mikey in terrible Jersey accents, I don't think they heard you over in Jersey. Both Naruto and Mikey glance at each other and grin at each other. Give me a hand, said Raph. Mikey then lifted his arms. Don't think about it wise guy, forget you guys I'll push it myself, said Raph. While Raph was trying to move the truck, voices could be heard coming closer to the door. Raph had no choice but to hide inside the armored truck just as a couple of thugs exited the building with a sack full of money. The thugs threw the sack inside the truck and shut its doors, trapping Raphael inside. Naruto's face palmed while also groaning, Donnie and Leo did the same things, while Mikey commented, poor choice Raphael. As the truck leaves, the turtles and a human step out from the shadow. Oh man, said Leo. Imagine their surprise when they open the back of that truck. Said Mikey. This was just what Master Splinter warned us about. Leo remarked. So what are we waiting for? Let's go recuse him. Naruto declares. Well then, the last one up on the roof hatched from a rotten egg, said Donatello leapt onto the rooftop following the truck. The others jumped up with ease, and son Naruto was in the lead. Hey no fair Naruto, you know you can jump better than the rest of us, said Donatello. It's called practice Donny, try it sometime, exclaimed Naruto. And you guys keep forgetting I wasn't hatched from an egg. Well I would, said Don in between jumps, but neither you nor Master Splinter want to teach us how to. As they reach where they can see the truck they saw it moving fast to the other direction. We can cut them off third and first, Leo instructed. If we run like crazy, the only guy who could run that fast and have the stamina for it is Naruto, Donatello stated. Do we have a choice? Asked Naruto. No, Donnie said bluntly. So move it. Before we lose them. Naruto immediately leapt from roof to roof with his brothers right behind him. Back at the sower. Master Splinter walked through the tunnel reaching the old drainage junction with Spike on his shoulder. As Master Splinter reached his destination, he sighed. 
the old drainage junction, now where are my sons? Suddenly he felt a tremble underneath him, he narrowed his eyes down to the ground. Then the ground started to crack. Then something burst out from the ground only to reveal two of the same robotic menaces that destroy his home. Splinter was shocked somehow the mechanical menaces followed him or something. Then three more burst out from the ground completely surrounding Master Splinter from every corner. One of the robot bites on his robe, using his tail to whip away the robot to the wall. The robot stood again, and ready for round two, Master grabbed Spike from his shoulder and put him somewhere high so the robot won't get him. Stay. Master Splinter commanded the pet turtle, buy the pet turtle, and give him a blank expression. Master Splinter nodded, good. Then he faces his five opponents and is ready to trash his some bots. Back on the surface, the four ninja followed the truck that had their brother in it, the truck stopped in a trash sprawl alley. All the thugs went inside except one who's left behind to guard the truck. Suddenly the large thug heard something beside the truck he went to investigate, but found nothing when he felt someone tapping on his shoulder. He turned around and only saw Naruto with a devious grin, hi, good evening, and good night. Naruto punched him in the face, knocking him out. Nice work, Naruto said Leo, Naruto gave Leo a thumbs up. Now let's get Ralph out of there. Man, whatever happens to good old-fashioned padlocks, said Mikey. Donnie chuckle, where's the fun in that? This one is all mine. He pulled out two screwdrivers from his bag and started work on the lock. Raphael said something, but they couldn't hear him, Mikey started to make fun of Raph. But that Raphael you have to speak up dude, I can't hear you. Raphael got frustrated and kicked the door as hard as he could. Okay I hear that. I'm trying to work here, said Donnie. Few moments later. At last Donnie finally unlocked the door, hey Raf, we'll come back bro. When the door opens Raf bursts out and tackles Mikey. Both Naruto and Leo roll their eyes. What a hothead. Said Leo. They were about to break them apart until Naruto sensed something behind them at the same time Leo and Donatello turned around. Three of them went to their defensive position and were ready to unsheathe their weapons. Ah guys you should stop now, said Naruto as he pulled his mask down. And why not? Asked Raph as he held against the wall. Before Naruto answers, Mikey beats him to it because we're not alone. Raph let go of Mikey and faced several shadows approaching them. Look at the freak. What's with the dweeby costumes? This isn't Halloween. The thugs from before, but with greater numbers, they surround the human and the turtles. The leader then stepped forward and issued a challenge, you're going down freak, nobody messes with the purple dragons. Especially wearing stupid turtle and some kind of fox mask costume. Sorry pal, but you're wrong. Replied Naruto with a smirk. These aren't costumes. All four turtles took out their weapons, while Naruto's trench knives launched out from under his wrist. All of them charge at the thugs with collective cry, Kaya. In the stance all the thugs are beaten like dominoes, landed on top of one another. After they got beaten the leader stood up and ran away. Let's get out of here. His lackeys follow running, as fast as they can. Give me some green, Mikey high five both Naruto and Raph. That was a little easier than I thought. Said Donatello sheepishly. I was wishing for more of those guys, said Raph. I just warmed up. Well don't look now, your wish just came true Raph, exclaimed Naruto, as pointing at the rooftop. Several shadows appeared, but unlike those thugs, they appear to be something familiar to them. Are those guys ninjas? Asked Leo, as the enemy ninjas dive down to surround them again. At ready guys, said Naruto, as he put on his defensive position. I'm going to enjoy this, said Raph with a grin. All of them attack. Donatello leapt over five of his opponents and spun his staff, landing them to the ground. Donnie smiled for his small victory, but it was cut short, the ninja he took down immediately stood up. Other side of the battle, Raphael took three of them. They surround him with a series of attacks, while Raph comments on their attacks. Nice dragon kick. Sweet double phoenix punch. Hi, you know this one. Raph spin kicked all of them. Next battle, Leo clashed swords with his opponent, they pushed each other until Leo got the upper hand and the ninja stumbled down. Then Leo jumps up to the roof, one of the ninjas also jumps to the roof, and the wall runs to Leo. As they clashed swords, the ninja landed on the left side of Leo, while another one jumped to the roof and landed on the other side of Leo. Two attacks Leo defend, two of them clashing their blades. Next battle Naruto easily overwhelms six of his opponents, three of them clash swords with Naruto's trench knives. He deflects all theirs attacks, then he swipe kick them making them fall to the ground hard, then three others ninja throws numbers of shuriken at him, Naruto quickly dodged them, as he approached them with great speedy kneel kick one of the ninjas under the chin, then quickly turned to the other one to deliver devastating punch to the gut. Last one was a little far off from Naruto's reach, he quickly grabbed one of his trench knife chains, making it pull back inside the device under his wrist. 
Then Naruto lifts his arm, then launches the trench knife from his wrist. Get over here. The trench knife went through the ninja's shoulder and got pulled towards Naruto. Don't worry, I didn't hit anything important. Said Naruto before he punched him hard on the face. Next battle Mikey tries to defend himself from a ninja with Tonfa as a weapon, then another ninja jumps behind him with also Tonfa as a weapon, both attacking him from both sides. Back to Donatello, two ninjas throw a shuriken from each of them to Donnie. Donatello shields himself from the two shuriken using his staff, as he shields himself from one ninja flying kick him, making Donatello hit the truck from behind, and Mikey flying toward the truck. Don, have we beaten them or they beaten us? Asked Mikey, as Donnie was about to answer, he quickly opened the door of the truck and pulled Mikey inside and shut the door before they became turtle Swiss cheese from a number of shuriken. Ask me again when we're winning, Mikey. Yeah, that's what I thought. Back at the sower, Master Splinter is fighting his own battle. Two of the robots were approaching the rat and jumped towards him, Master Splinter swung his walking cane and destroyed the robots. Then another one jumps from behind with a crying screech, because it's so noises Master Splinter quickly swings his cane at it and destroys it. His battle is over seeing all the robots are destroyed, he grabs Spike from his hiding place. Then suddenly the ground started to crumble underneath them, they both fell into it. Fortunately both are okay with minor injury, they landed deeper inside the sower. You okay Spike? Asked Splinter to the pet turtle who slowly nodded. Master Splinter stood up and started walking to find his sons, but suddenly Master Splinter found something amazing. Back at the surface, the team got their butts handed to them. More and more ninjas keep coming. RRGH, how many of these goons do we have to beat till they get the hint? Raph groans. Really, they just keep on coming, said Michelangelo. Donnie? Waiting for plan B here. Exclaimed Naruto. Almost had it, said Don, as he was hot wiring the truck. As the engine roared to life Donnie yelled, alright, next stop. Anywhere, but here. Leonardo had to hold Raph back, as he said, come on we're going. All of them jump inside the back of the truck Mikey, being the last one in, shut the doors. They drove away erratically driving, nice driving Don with a turtle with no license, said Mikey with a sarcastic tone. Hey you want pretty or you want effective? Remarked Donatello. I gotta tell ya, this has been one mando, day, said Mikey, first those weird metal robots dig underground, then. What's with all those ninjas? Ninjas in New York City besides us, it's just not right. Talk about not right, said Raphael, as he opened the sack full of money, just take a look at this. Show me the money baby, wahoo. Shouted Mikey. This isn't finders keepers Mikey, said Naruto, taking the wad of cash that Mikey just picked up. Donnie stopped by a police car. Leonardo then rolled down the window, threw the sack of money out on the police car's front hood, and yelled out, here, take care of the money will ya? Did you see that some little green men, and one with a fox mask in an armored car, just threw a bunch of money at us? Said the young officer. Rookie. Said the older officer. Don then drove the armored truck through an abandoned sewer entrance, which would lead to their destination. The old drainage junction at South Point. There they found Master Splinter surrounded by broken and smashed robots, which he took on earlier. They all cried out in joy. Master Splinter. You're alright. Father Dad. Sensei. Yes, well I am glad to see you too my sons, said Master Splinter. Master so much has happened today, said Leo. Yes, yes, there will be time to tell me all about it later Leonardo. But first, I wish to take you all home, said Master Splinter. Home? Wondered Naruto. We got no home, those robots just smashed our pad, remember Sensei? Said Raph. Do not worry, I think I have found a solution to our current housing problem. Follow me my sons, said Splinter, as he leapt down a giant hole. The others did, as their sensei requested with Mikey yelling. Poa, and that was, as far as he got before Naruto, and Raph pushed him down the hole. Not funny you guys. Said Mikey, as he fell down. Yes it is, said Raph while Naruto laughed loudly, then Raph jumped in the hole followed by Naruto. As they came out from the hole, Mikey exclaimed, whoa, wicked slide. Then he looked around. No offense Master Splinter, but this place doesn't seem so great said Mikey. Look with your heart Michelangelo, and not your eyes, said Master Splinter. Okay, replied Mikey. And walk this way, said Master Splinter, ouch, Mikey winces. Soon they arrived in a humongous chamber with numerous rooms. Whoa, this is beyond awesome. Exclaimed Naruto. Then the five heroes decided to explore the new lair for a bit. I could tune this place up, said Donatello, and Mikey decided to be a little greedy. This room here, mine. Then jump beside Donnie, and where you are standing, also mine. You see my sons, change is good, said Splinter. We couldn't agree more Master Splinter, said Leo. 
good, so let's see you boys clean up for a change, this chamber is filthy, declared Master Splinter. The five collectively groaned, man. Unknown place. A man with black hair, in the wiki it said his hair is black, but I watched TMNT 2003, I saw his hair is purple, but whatever. And his eyes are brown. He was wearing a white cloak with a red foot insignia, and stared down at the leader of the band of purple dragons. Sir, said the leader hesitantly. I, my men. We lost the armored truck with the money. But we were attacked. By some sort of karate frog creature, and a guy in an orange hoodie with white fox mask, and they took us by surprise. It wasn't my fault. Enough, said the man. I promise sir, I won't fail you again, said the leader. I know, said the man quietly you won't fail me again, ever. No sir, please. Followed by maniacally laughing. The end. Thanks for watching my video, and make sure to check out the author of this fanfic, link is in the description, see you next time, till then sayonara.